eight or nine properties in Pontiac now, and they're all very similar to this. Uh, basically, we found this property on the MLS. We get properties sent to us, much, much like I'm sure a lot of you do, uh, by our realtor. And uh, it's kind of tough to see the picture there, but the property was listed for $14,000. Chris is going to make an adjustment here real quick. There we go. Yeah, I mean, you know, throw this to Jeremy. We can put it online somewhere, maybe on a blog or whatever. Um, i got to do a blog post. Maybe I'll just um, there you go. There for this week. But, uh, basically, what we look at, we do a very simple cash flow analysis on each property. Uh, we're looking at uh, the return calculated with, with the, the taxes, the insurance, and, uh, and the property management. I know there's other stuff that we can throw in there, vacancy, uh, legal fees, uh, maintenance, all kinds of things, but we like to keep it simple and, and use this number because it, it's easy to calculate. And uh, we like to see a uh, 16% return based on this calculation. So basically what this, this step in the process is telling us is that I think I can sell this property at the end of the day when I'm done rehabbing it with a tenant in place for $45,000. Okay, so that's my, uh, you know, I know a lot of rehabbers, they go out and do, uh, you know, they, they uh, try to establish what the ARV is. This is my ARV. I'm selling, selling the property on, um, on the cap rate, which, which I'm saying is 16%. Okay, so that's the cash flow. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, all right, what's it going to take to rehab this property? And I know you can't read this, but basically, let me just run through um, the numbers with you. My bottom line on every property, I want to try and make $10,000, okay? So when I look at the cost involved with doing that, I know I just calculated uh, that I'm going to sell the property for $45,000, okay? And I've got a number of costs. I've got my purchase costs, I've got my holding costs, and I've got my uh, selling costs, okay? Those are, those are usually pretty fixed, usually right in the same price range most times. Uh, one variable that, that always comes up is how much is it going to cost to rehab this thing, okay? So if I look at this and I say, all right, I'm going to sell it for 45, I pretty much know what my, my, my costs are going to be minus the rehab. Uh, I want to make $10,000. That tells me I've got a budget of 
15500 that I can budget in for rehabbing the property. So I'm explaining this, and all of this on, on each property that you look at, I've got an Excel template set up. This takes me about 10 minutes to do with any property. So I can look through my, you know, the realtor sends me 20 properties. I can look through and immediately say, all right, and this one's no good, it's in the wrong location, this is the wrong size, this one, oh, this one looks good, it's, it's, it's the right price, I like the address, I go through this, 10 minutes later, I've got an answer whether or not I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and look at this property. You know, 90% of the properties that come across your desk, you can weed out in, in you know, five, five seconds, and the other maybe, maybe takes 10 minutes. So this, this is something you wanna set up and get really good at doing, you can practice this, you can do this on a million properties. And if you're not ready to buy, fine. Go ahead and start practicing and get to know your market. That's what we started doing. And we got real good with the numbers so that we, we figured out real quick where the, where the good deals were. All right, so I said Kelly out, I work full time. Uh, I said Kelly out, go look at the house. She goes and looks at the house and she sends me a picture. And I said, you're at the wrong house. <laughs> she said, no I'm not, this is the right house. Well, long story short, they took the wrong picture of, of the property. This property, the address is 1041. Real turn, This is 1014 our okay? address. So I'm, I'm sitting here looking at this. This is not a bad house, but um, it's, it's kind of one of the middle. This property, minus, you can see the roof is in pretty rough shape. But it's brick. You can't tell from the picture real really well, but it's on a nice corner lot. It's got a nice privacy fence. There are a lot of nice things about this property that obviously weren't being marketed to. So she sent me this. She went through the house. Um, we did our inspection. And I know you can't read this as well, but basically we've got a standard inspection sheet. You know, we've got printouts you take them with you. If you fill up, you go through the house systematically. We fill everything out, and we came up with a budget of around eleven thousand dollars. And this is after you know I did a ten-minute analysis. Kelly spent about a half hour at the house, and we've got our full business case for this property. Okay, so we went in, we submitted our offer. Now the the, the, the list price was fourteen thousand dollars. We went in at, at fifteen five. Okay, we really wanted this house. We knew it was a good deal um, because. We were going to make more than our, our ten thousand dollars, our goal of ten thousand dollars on, on this property. Um, so we said, all right, we'll, we'll offer fifteen five, close in ten days, we put thousand dollars know, for the DMV, uh, and we did a seven day inspection. Now, in retrospect, these last two things, we should have been a lot more aggressive on those things because um, the response that came back was that there were multiple offers on the property, and this is pretty common. Uh, any properties on the MLS, we found that more times than not, the property is going to come back uh, highest and best offer. And we, we, we told them this was our best offer. And we didn't get it. So, went on to the next one. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Lo and behold, six weeks later, you know, I'm sit, sitting, uh, sitting there looking through the listing, what pops up on. Uh, on the list of, or on, our, on the properties that our realtor sending us. This property comes back. We said, all right, we already got the numbers. We don't even need to look at it. Let's send the offer in. Uh, we made our offer a little stronger this time. Okay, we still came in at the 15.5. We're going to close in, in, in 10 days. Uh, bumped our EMD up to 7,000. In retrospect, after watching some of Jeremy's videos and some of the advice he's given, I should have bumped this EMD up to 15.5. Give them all the cash up front. So what? I want the property, right? Yep. That tells them I want the property. Okay? So we did no inspection, they accepted the offer. Okay? So uh, how did we fund the deal? Well, uh, we, we've been building relationships much like you guys are doing here tonight in this, this sort of arena. Everywhere we go, uh, the, the gentleman that funded this deal is actually someone who Kelly met probably 10 years ago. And had coffee with them at Bob Evans, and you know, she's got like this whole clique at Bob Evans. She used to be really interested. Long story short, but uh, you know, so she got to talking to him one day, 
and uh, basically he funded the deal for us. Uh, and he's funded quite a few of our deals now. What we what he offers us, 10 points up front and 10% interest, and he'll go up to 12 months uh, on the loan. So and in the meantime, we're just paying interest only on the loan. And again, our intention is to buy the property, fix it up, put a tenant in place, 15, and sell that property. As a, uh, as a cash flow the couch so, cushions, right? Uh, exactly. uh, so how did we do? Well, uh, I know it's tough to see these pictures, but you know, essentially, we, we put a new roof on, uh, we cleaned up the front yard, we took a few trees down. Uh, on the inside, uh, it had beautiful hardwood floors on the inside. Uh, we painted, uh, painted the kitchen, added some appliances.
Uh, you know, typically, if you're going to do a green hat, the first thing you're going to want to do uh, is, is bring that inspector in because uh, you know, it's kind of funny the way it works. The more holes and whatnot there are in the property, the better it is because you want that, that number up front to be as low as possible. Because what happens is you do the inspection, they give you a report, you go and, and, and fix all these different items on, on the property, and then they come back out and retest. And based on that retest, you get various uh, those rebates that you can get from the Sales Energy and all the different uh, incentives for doing those types of updates. But on this particular property, we, uh, we spent right around three thousand dollars for the green updates, and we're going to get about we got about fourteen hundred dollars back from the rebates. So it's you know, it is more expensive to do the to do the uh, we had in that manner, but you've got a lot to market to your tenants uh, and your buyers. And I, I think that someone that comes in and lives in this home, um, a lot of homes in Pontiac are, are old. Okay? And they, they leak air and their energy bills are high. And I'm sure it's the same way in Detroit. And you get a tenant that comes in and they got to pay, you know, off the ass for, excuse my language, for, for, their, for their gas bill in the winter. They've got the choice to pay the gas bill to keep it warm or pay you. Uh, you know, what, you know what, what's, uh, what, who are they going to pay? And the other thing is, once they start seeing their gas bills, it's going to give them an, an incentive to stay in the property. I don't want to leave because, you know, my gas bills are so low. Okay? So there's there's lots of things that, that, that go into why we get the green So, all right, Jeremy's giving me the hug. So hey everybody put their hands together for Todd. By the way, that was some good shit. You may not know it, because you haven't done it.